Hi and welcome back to the 1022 build. Today we're going to be looking at a Ruby 1022 Accurized Bolt. So what I have here is an Accurized 1022 Bolt. It looks pretty much just like a standard bolt, but there's a few differences. And the two biggest differences in this is the face of the bolt is surface ground flat and square to the rest of the bolt. Um, which means that when it closes against the end of the barrel, it's going to close in the same place. It's not going to hop around. It's not going to shift position left or right. Um, it's just going to close square and it also helps with a little bit of bolt bounce. So this is uh, surface ground. The next thing is the back of the headspace here is ground flat and the headspace itself is corrected. So it's not higher on one side than the other. It's not off at an angle. It's exactly the right distance. Now I put up the size on screen and you can t measure your own if you have um, a micrometer at home but um, that being square is the biggest increase in accuracy over the standard bolt and the reason is when it drives your bullet up home and it puts it into the breech it's going to sit in the exact same position each time. It's not going to bounce around, it's not going to have a loose space that the bullet can move forwards and backwards inside so it'll make it seat the exact same way each time. It's going to make sure that the bullet is going to be the same distance from the lands and grooves each time. It's going to just make sure that everything is nice and solid and repeatable. So that's the biggest improvement is the headspace. We have other improvements on it. We get a, a hooked extractor to help with uh, extracting the bullets. It does help. Um, I rarely get failed to extract on um, standard power loads. Um, on low, uh, on low power loads sometimes, but that's more that the bullet won't actually push the bolt back enough to flick it out. Uh, we have a pinned firing pin, which means there's a pin going across the top here that's holding down the firing pin inside the bolt face so that it hits the bolt, or it hits the, the rim of the cartridge at the same uh, angle and the same depth each time. It just means you get a lot less um, misfires and a lot less... <laughs> A lot less uh, frustration when you're facing down a rabbit and you pull the trigger and nothing happens. Um, so that's the front of the bolt. This particular one has a titanium firing pin just because I wore out my original and I just got a new one. Um, they're a bit lighter. Other than that, nothing really important. The back of the bolt is um, ground to a bit of a curve over a standard one. That's just to help with the bolt cycling with subsonic ammo. So when it comes back this is the hammer here. It comes back, a standard one will hit the hammer and it's a pretty hard curve on it and it throws the hammer down pretty hard. With the curved surface it comes back and it rolls it back with a little bit more ease and that's just to help with cycling subsonic ammo. It doesn't really do anything else. So this guy here um, does help a lot with accuracy. Now you can see in the video I'm going to show you now um, I shot five or six five round groups. These aren't three round groups. Um, it's the first time I used these uh, CCI standard velocity ammo, so I had to get it um, uh, worn into the barrel because there's different coating on them, there's different lead. But after about 10 shots, it started to come down. The first group, not great, it's, uh, it's well over an inch, but then it starts uh, decreasing all the way to the right where you can see that we're well sub ammo away at 50 meters. So. We're less than half an inch at 50 meters, which is brilliant. That's where we want to be. That's a that's a good gun. That thing is going to have no trouble entering competitions and ranking. It's a great gun for how much we spent on it. Our total expenditure so far on this guy is the stock set us back. Let's call it a hundred dollars. Some the boy just slightly less and some of the Archangels are slightly more the Target Deluxe models but let's round it off to 100, 110. We're looking at 10 euro for the JB Weld to do the, uh, the trigger fix uh, to bring the trigger down from five and a half pounds down to our nice, oh, I think my one now is at 2.3 2 pounds, it's been like that for about a year and uh, the barrel recrown, if you know someone who has a manual recrowning kit you can get a nice target crown for free if you know someone who has the kit. If not, a smith will do it for a small amount. He'll chop it back, he'll recrown it, and he'll re-thread it to uh, whatever thread you're using. I think Ruger in America is half inch UNEF. 
and in Europe it's a half inch UNF thread. But um, so let's say so far we're sitting at let's call it 80 euro for the barrel. We're sitting at about 190 euro and the last piece which we did today is the bolt. Different prices from different companies depending on how much you get done if it's complete rework or if it's just the headspace and the bolt face but uh, I think they average out at about let's say ninety dollars and some are even cheaper because they'll take your old bolt as part payment and they'll redo that and sell it on later but um, we're looking at a maybe two hundred and eighty dollars to bring a 1022 from a 1.8 or larger group down to a sub MOA group it's definitely less than an inch I'll get a proper size for you now in a minute but um, the important part is we didn't use any target ammunition we're using standard CCI round nose which is well not designed for hunting um, is not an expensive um, batch tested round it's just a CCI subsonic with a round nose more or less I think it has 10, 10 feet per second more um, and we're getting that kind of performance out of it which is great for that amount of money if you went the other road and you went with kid barrels, kid trigger set, or Volkswagen and bits and pieces, and different chassis, you're going to be well up on nearly three times the price off the the gun. You might even have all of the parts off the gun changed out, including the receiver. You might have none of your original uh, parts left. You could have two guns. You could have your old Ruger and you could have your brand new uh, custom build. But that's up to you. What's budget to some one person isn't budget to somebody else. And to me, under 300 euro to get a gun shooting reliably and accurately is a good price point. Now, the optics you put on there, it's a 1022. It doesn't mean a whole lot what you put on there, as long as it's not going to lose zero. You're looking at something in around the $100 mark will be fine. I mean, I use the, um, I use the Falcon Optics 4 to 14 by 44 um, because I had it for another review. And I find it a great little scope. It doesn't lose zero on anything that has no... Uh, practically no kick um, it's fine on 308 and everything underneath that this particular one after a year on the wind mag is started to get a bit flaky but on the 1022 it's still absolutely perfect and it's nice to have mil mil uh, turrets and crosshair but that's it for the do it yourself as much as you could build on your 1022 you've seen how mine went from standard to the way it is now and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start uh, testing it out in longer ranges so we're going to start getting a, a good baseline at 100 meters and we're going to see how far we can go out with it as well as testing some other stuff I want to see how good we can get this factory 1022 stock so we've got a Kdex riser on the way and we've got um, the original wooden stock for the 1022 we're going to see how good we can get that um, because it's the one that comes with the cheapest entry-level 1022 and it's a solid stock it's better than the plastic one there's no flex in it um, you can easily make it free float and with a Kdex riser and a little bit of JB weld I'm pretty sure we can get that um, almost as good as a hundred dollar chassis so um, we have a good bit more to come on the 1022 uh, if you're into center fire at the moment on the center fire videos we're going pillar bedding or three in the wind mag these are the pillar beds here you can see they're cut to size I'm just waiting for the JB weld to arrive as soon as that arrives we're going to go through the whole video on how to size, shape, cut, um, measure and install the pillars into a pre-bedded chassis and we're going to show you the accuracy that that gives afterwards and then after that we're going on to go different uh, different chassis but uh, for now that's it with this build series uh, if you like the series you can subscribe and you'll get updates straight away over the last couple of days I've also done a, uh, a live stream which I haven't heard anyone else doing I'm sure people have but different circles um, I did a live stream shooting rabbits the day was terrible and I think I fired at one rabbit but I had a good few viewers and I did an edit which you can see I think was the video before this but um, yeah the live stream was a lot of fun I'm definitely going to do it again I'm getting different equipment and a better camera because the one I had uh, wasn't great it did the job but uh, it was more of a method test than um, an actual uh, than an actual planned out event but uh, if you want to keep up to date on those things, if you go to my Facebook link on the top of the um, on the top of the site, or I can put it on here, 
uh, you will get updates because there's no other place where I can put out an update and you'll get it straight away. I'd also post straight to Twitter if you wanted to follow me on Twitter. Um, but if you like this series, give me a subscription and uh, I'll keep doing them. And thanks for watching as ever and I'll see you guys next time.